I'm John Tesh. Coming up, I'll take you on a trip into the world of divine healing, and you'll learn about a powerful healing weapon in the war against sickness. In the very beginning of my cancer journey, the key figures were high-level surgeons and oncologists. But when the physicians, the surgeons and oncologists had finished their remarkable work of removing the tumors from my body, I still faced several recurrences of the disease that sent me and my family the message that this cancer was not through with me. Would it ever be? It was then that my wife and I came upon a series of teachings that created an enormous revelation and then reliance in something known as divine healing. Or put simply, the understanding that the Word of God is indeed powerful enough to destroy disease in the human body. However, even then, I was starting to realize that after receiving a deadly cancer diagnosis in 2015, I was becoming a cancer patient. It was my new identity. I was descending into hell. You can read about this in the Relentless book in the chapter called Pity Party. And listen, I know this happens to lots of people. Maybe it's happened to you or a family member. But I now have the revelation that if you can't get beyond seeing yourself sick, it will kill you. Listen to what Andrew Womack says about this. If it was just up to the devil, he goes about seeking whom he may devour, but he cannot devour everybody. If it was up to the devil, every one of us would be dying. Every one of us would be paralyzed. Every one of us would have a death sentence, but he can't have everybody because you have to cooperate. And it's not always because you're out there sinning or saying, devil, I love you, come fight me, <laughs> come devour me. That's not what you're doing, but you have believed a lie that you're only human, that there's nothing you can do. The doctor says it's incurable, so what can I do? You can believe God. You can begin to start renewing your mind and find out who you are and take your authority and speak to that devil and command it to leave. Some of you think, but mine isn't a devil. It's just something physical. Anyway. <laughs> Our spiritual weapons, what are they used for? To cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's another thing that see most people have just given their thoughts over to the devil. They don't think you can keep your mind stayed upon God. But I've already quoted that verse once, Isaiah 26, three, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. That's talking about your imagination, who you are taking the word of God and thinking on it until it paints a picture of you of victory, of authority, of control over the devil that's coming against you. And when you think that way, and keep your mind stayed upon him. Not just, you know, the Bible says to just live by faith. They don't visit there. They don't vacation at faith. This is where they live. You live by faith. You can bring every thought into captivity and under obedience to Christ. You don't have to have these negative thoughts. When I was growing up in the church, I was taught to pray quietly to myself. And if I was sick, to ask, even beg God for a healing. But what I was hearing now from Andrew Womack and other teachers at the Karis Bible College was that there was more power, there was supernatural power in speaking a healing of yourself in Jesus' name, speaking out faith-filled words. And my wife and I discovered a remarkable scripture in Mark 11:23. 23. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will be done shall have whatever he says. Listen to Barry Bennett. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. It, you created out of the abundance of your heart, you bring forth what's in there. So the question is what's in there? What's in there? You believe, so there's two things here. First, we talked about you hear the word, Second, we talked about you read the word. Third and fourth, you believe the word and you speak the word. You believe the word and you speak the word. You create an environment in which you can prosper. Your soul prospers, your body prospers because your words prosper. Because they're his words, the highest frequency words there are. And you speak those out over things that don't reflect his nature and his purpose. And you say, uh-uh-uh, just like you're scolding a dog. You say, no pain, you're not my pain. 
no diagnosis. You're not my diagnosis. I heard what the doctor says, but he doesn't have the last word. Jesus is the last word. And you begin to train yourself to, to zip your lip when, when the abundance of your heart's wanting to complain, whine, or agree with negative reports, just zip it. And so there it is. If you're facing a health challenge right now or you wanna help somebody else who is struggling, remember that verse, Mark 11:23. speak to your mountain. I have it tattooed on my arm. Yes, it's important to have faith for the doctors and the surgeons. If I hadn't, I would be dead right now. But when it came to commanding that relentless demonic cancer in my body to leave and never return, it was all about this verse, Mark 11:23. I stopped speaking to God about my cancer and instead I began speaking to cancer about God.